welcome back guys to yet another world of warcraft video on this channel as you can see we are back at my old setup well no i'm back in denmark again and uh we are back to the good old basement dwelling period anyway um today we have as you guys can see in front of me right here we have the wowhead economy weekly wrap up 221 now before we get into it make sure that you guys drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel with all notifications on and drop a comment down below of what you currently think of uh these weekly posts and uh yeah i mean that's really it because uh you know I, I don't i don't know what much else i mean we're obviously going to talk about a lot of different things today but i'd love to hear what you guys think about these uh, economy weekly posts I, I know i asked a question previously as well but i just love to know what you guys think of these posts and uh, maybe any improvements you'd like to see to them or um something completely different but anyway uh today we are going to talk about two nine point two point five uh cross faction trading that's eventually coming up uh new vestige of the devourers we'll talk about that too gold cap and why the economy is broken is the reddit post so those are some of the things that we're going to talk about today on the table of contents so you guys can see as the first thing that comes up here it is cross faction trading now obviously you can see one of the major additions to 9.2.5 is the start of opening up cross faction play as gold makers this is huge because the inabilities and items and gold in the mail between factions severely limits not only the character choice but being able to trade directly with the other faction outside of the auction house another aspect hinted at but not yet implemented is cross realm trading this would completely expose mark uh, expose mark markets on all servers and have a significant impact on the economy as a well. whole so basically what um seminar is talking about here is uh the pcr going in over the cross fashion play and uh obviously the trading right now you can only do instant trading between alliance uh, and horde players uh so obviously the beginning stages of what will probably be a more fully fleshed out system once we get to 9.2.5 and probably also the new expansion, but this is what we have so far. Um, and then obviously there's some opinions here about what people think of, um, uh, uh, and, and some, you know, extra information. You can see Vadis here says cross faction trading in instance content and cross faction mail is enabled on the PTR. You can trade and mail items and go between factions on the same connected realm. I don't really see, uh, this being that much of a difference from the auction house being faction wide at the moment. Uh, it was a little more complicated to trade between people. So this is definitely opening that up a little more. I think it's a welcome change, honestly, to, uh, how the auction house uh, works in the game and then he also uh, goes on to say here there is currently no cross server trading on the ptr when they first teased this cross faction trading they mentioned how it's annoying you can't trade boe drops and consumables in cross realm groups so they may be working on something there as well but not nothing uh this far in the ptr so this is a really good point um a couple of interviews and dev talks ago they actually did talk about um the fact that they wanted to potentially open up in the future for boe drops and consumables uh, to be uh, tradable in in cross realm groups uh, but nothing so far they're probably going to wait until they see the reaction to the uh, first uh, edition of the cross realm trading and also you know play and then obviously here you can see that uh, we have this uh, new thing called vestige of the devourers uh Seminan was talking about the fact that there's a lot of people that had issues with this item. It wasn't showing up on people's uh, servers like it's, it was actually supposed to. Uh, it was a hot fix, and you couldn't actually even see it on there. But what this uh, basically is is um, where is it? Uh, here it is. The vestige cost four uh, forty eight hundred, and this is from Manfius, by the way. And it's binding pickup. This can only use on a rank one pattern to create a rank five. I level 249 is sold by Vilo the Enlightened Quartermaster in Haven. So you guys can see right here that what this is, is basically a, a new item that lets us use rank one legendary P base item rank one legendaries and use them to create rank five. So it, you know, it, it's kind of a bit too late in my opinion to add this into the game. Uh, but I suppose it's good for the people that don't want to pay, um, you know, the 50 to 70 K for rank sevens that they're down to now, if they want to be even more cheap than that, then you can probably get a rank five legendary for, you know, under 10,000 gold. Maybe, maybe if you're lucky with some of them, uh, but still it's, it's a lot, uh, it's a lot 
a lot cheaper so definitely a big difference there now um besides that we obviously have some analysis by memphis here and then also some opinions here which is really good you can see here i think it's a great quality of life change for the average player will let people try out different legos fairly easy i think it'll be pointless to craft the most service if looking for profit which i overall agree with and then i think some people will mistakenly think they can spam them out and level up recipes and com compete in the rank 7 market i think it's a minor kick in the gut to anyone who was hoping to still make gold off rank 4s to rank 6s it's a small trade-off to make the game more fun for the masses uh and uh yeah that's uh, i agree it's definitely a casual friendly change and uh definitely not towards people that are trying to make gold off a lower rank legendaries uh but that you know it, it was uh, bound to happen eventually that they were going to cut it out somehow uh so this was what they decided to do and this is what we're going to have to live with and then here we actually have a uh, little bit of a reddit discussion post that says gold cap and why the economy is broken and um so this guy michael esque uh basically shares a whole opinion about why he thinks the economy is uh is uh, is broken in world of warcraft and you know a lot of the things that he points out here is interesting enough and that's why we're going to go through it together so as you guys can see uh we'll read it here hello everyone I'd like to share my goal making journey in the hopes that it might encourage others to persist in this fun and exciting gameplay aspect of World of Warcraft. At the same time, I'd like to raise the, for discussions some aspects that I feel are detrimental to the health of the economy part of the game. A little background about me, I've never played WoW while before Shadowlands, inspired by the awesome cinematics, but more importantly by the level squish to 60, I decided to jump in. I know absolutely nothing about how professions work, cancel scanning, reset days, or well match TSM strings, anything really. Um, through lurking on this very sub reddit as well by watching very informative user videos thank you man for the latest goat maker penguin and others i was able to learn quite quickly though i obviously made many costly mistakes and missed plenty of opportunities i've played for two months during the 9.0 patch on a medium pop realm skip 9.1 and return at the beginning of 9.2 in a high pop realm i play on eu he says here are some things i did not do I could not take part in this 9.0 legendary early market bonanza since I didn't have millions to invest in match to level up my legendary crafting to rank 4 at the same time as old money goblins. Calling us old timers. I also was very lazy with getting the reputation required to get craft a rank 7 and 9.2 he's obviously talking about. And I have never stocked up on cheap materials such as progenitor sensei. I've never flipped BOEs as old battle pets. So he basically has uh, almost no experience at all when it comes to gold making. So here's what he said he did do. I uh, crafted stuff, he says, uh, focusing on one profession at a time, learning the price trends, buy cheap mats on Saturday, sell on chance on Wednesday, buy cheap fish, make feasts, really basic stuff. But I made around 200k in my first two weeks of crafting, and it was a lot of fun, as I felt I was engaging in an active economy while also providing useful things to the players, enchants, consumables, etc. Then I had enough gold to get into the legendary market late, but still. And honestly, at that point, the fun diminished, uh, just as the profits profits exploded i don't feel like selling legendaries for 300 percent of crafting costs is providing a useful service to other people on my server and i actually agree with that uh it's it, you know crazy profit margins on something like legendaries is obviously not something that uh, you necessarily want to put on other players but we all have to remember how expensive it is to actually level legendaries and how expensive it was to level legendaries for a lot of players and that's why they charge the extra premium because it takes a lot of either gold and or time to get to that point but anyway and then to continue here and here are my main concerns assuming limited time to play the opportunity cost for crafting anything except legendaries and shadowlands is absurd why bother making potions feasts and chants sharpening stones bags etc when in that same time you can make your legendary crafting more efficient one sold legendary is worth hundreds of other items secondly the game rewards handsomely predatory market behavior a, part, a person with a moderate amount of gold can easily reset the price in a few key consumables they can buy massive amounts of cheap materials and undercut casual crafters for base legendaries and low medium pup rounds if the five to six people actually crafting them agree to fix prices they can essentially conspire to keep the prices high thirdly the game does not reward multiplayer eco economic cooperation in any meaningful way it's always more efficient and profitable to have all your crafting done by yourself on your alts preferably even uh, have all your alts in your own guild for easy 
guild bank access this also scales in a toxic manner if you make enough gold to afford multiple accounts you could be crafting a multiple accounts at the same time and gold can buy you zero to 60 leveling boost to make that feasible and then he says in conclusion the math and the systems work in such a way as to encourage vertical integration predatory market pra practices collusion and cartelization in the detriment of the end consumers experience so obviously this is a lot of very big words and if you guys do not have any sort of education uh, when it comes to e economics uh, this is probably something you might not understand at all um as you can see he talks about the irl free market so the most simple way of describing it is yes the world of warcraft uh auction house and the uh, player economy is obviously player driven it is a very free market where you know if you can do everything individually yourself you're going to do more than if you're multiple players and sure as he talks about up here it does you know uh player player cooperation multiplayer aspects of the economic drive in the game is not something that's widely looked at it's it's also not something that people get put towards all the time um but that's that's something that i also feel i, I feel like that would make it even more dangerous because you're here he talks about the fact that you know if five to six people have to actually crafting legendaries they all banded together and decided hey we're gonna control these prices monopolize them then they could keep the prices high on a server if you think of that on a higher scale right if all the big boy whales in world of warcraft had access to control every single market on every single server the auction houses would look much different and people would be much poorer than they currently are so i i i, I get the point that he's trying to you know push forward here but at the same time it's not that simple to fix it but it obviously is just concern concerns that he's going through so uh, that's one of the reasons that i wanted to talk about it but it's you know still it's still uh important to look at look at this post and think about it and then he goes in and says ps stop watching get 300k easily with this farm videos most of them are a waste of your time now obviously uh as you guys know, if you see any of any of these, you know, get 300k EC or like hourly millions of gold and all this, most of the time, uh, most of the time you'll see it as either misleading, misleading content or clickbait, right? Um, and that is something that you obviously has, have to get through. It's the name of the game when it comes to, uh, you know, when it comes to YouTube and you're going to have to watch through a lot of those videos to find a good content. Um, so it's definitely something that you're gonna have to think about but obviously some of these videos still have some truth them to them you know there's a reason that so many people watch them and like them and also do what's what gets told in those videos uh they're just you know most of the time exaggerated a little too much uh but anyway uh besides that there is obviously the fact that the mage tower is back around permanently and there are mm, so much content out there for the mage tower manfi has made videos on it penguin made videos on it kjack i did uh so you're going to be able to find a lot of content when it comes to that uh, but that is basically everything that we had for this economy weekly wrap-up post uh, i appreciate you guys watching this video and uh there's some interesting comments on here so if you guys would like to go read this and tilt out of your mind then you are absolutely free to do so but that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until the next time, see you guys.